Hello YouTube, the initial PETG tune is complete, so I started printing pieces that are outside the hot chamber. My priority was installing controller fans. At 100% speed, the pie temperature is 42 Celsius, a 10 degree reduction versus no fans. However, it is noisy, so I modified config to adjust speed based on temps. The fans can be wired and controlled separately if desired. There are additional lines to show these readings in main sail. As always, my latest printer config file will be linked below. The prints seem to take forever. For cosmetic pieces, slicer settings can be adjusted since they don't require strength. Try reducing the infill to 25% and use a less complex pattern such as grid. Top and bottom layers can be reduced to three. If you fill out the print bed, look for heating and cooling issues. This front right corner consistently has lifting, so I'll have to look into this later. All I can do is rearrange the parts to minimize use of that corner. Remember the video where I told you to measure twice and cut once? Well, this is what happens when I don't follow my own advice. I forgot to account for the increased printer height while making cuts. On the bright side, I am going with the Nevermore carbon filter. Therefore, I don't need the exhaust hole anymore. I recut a new panel, drill a small hole, and glue the Bowden coupler in that same spot. I can always modify and revert to the stock exhaust later. Since I'm using clipper screen, I only printed the mini display front cover and hinge. Both pieces were glued together. This allows me to feed the USB cable through until I find a more elegant solution. It also allows for a backup solution in case my Nexus breaks. Don't skip the foam tape. It spaces out the panel so the gantry doesn't rub against it. It also helps seal the chamber for printing ABS. There are two clip sizes. The thinner 4mm clip secures the top and rear panels using the 1mm tape. The side panels use the thicker 6mm clips and 3mm tape. If you have trouble with T-nuts, attach them to the screws first before mounting. A small thin flathead can be used to manually rotate and lock the nut in place. This saves a lot of headaches trying to chance it. I stumbled across this website and realized I fed the filament incorrectly through this clip. It fishes through this hole, which I didn't notice, and was not in the assembly manual. Not sure why there is a huge center cutout. The PTFE tube now runs from the clip all the way to the tool head. I believe this is the way you're supposed to do it. Time to print more panel clips. Nope. This latch snapped, and of course I haven't finished setting up for ABS or printed spare parts yet. The piece is comically fragile, and you can't buy it separately online. Since the snap bottom remains, it kind of locks, so I tried printing a spare. As expected, since it partially works, I got partial results. I swapped it anyways and was able to print a second piece, which came out perfectly fine. If your PIF provider has options for adding the exterior pieces, I recommend paying extra for that. You can then enclose a printer for ABS during the main build. Otherwise, you better hope that nothing breaks while trying to print those out, like what happened to me. These pieces take longer to print than you would think, and it's hard to beat print farms. Reminder, there are no spare parts with PIF. I continued to mount panels and added this window decal from Frozen CPU. They will be closing down after 23 years. This is one product I remember the most for and was glad to get my hands on it. The case is getting heavier, so I printed handles. These are from the Voron 2.2, so fitment is off in both the 3mm and 6mm sizes. Unless you have really tiny hands, skip the stubby version. I chose the 3mm version and offset the gap with leftover 3mm foam tape. Continuing with fitment issues, some of your parts may not accept the 6x3 magnets at all. This can be tune related, but even my PIF parts were difficult to press in. For some pieces, you could press it in using an adjacent piece. If you try enlarging the hole with a bolt, you risk breaking the plastic. Trying to grind down the magnet is equally fruitless. My solution? Just buy some smaller 5x3 magnets since they want you to glue it in anyways. Check the polarity before doing so. While making this video, the Nevermore version 6 beta is out. A big improvement is not having to butcher the 5015 fans. They also improved the airflow and included quality of life changes. 
If you can print the sliding lid perfectly, it's a nice toolless carbon replacement. Continuing to prepare for ABS, I add a chamber firmster, which is simply wired through the existing Z chain. The acrylic sheets are directly from Mandela Roseworks and are cut perfectly. They ship for less than $100 and I recommend them if you need a supplier. With the panels on, it really reduces the fan and motor noise. I decide to add a Logitech webcam and set it up using the existing documentation on Crow's Nest. For now, I leave it outside the chamber so I have more choices on camera placement and shots. If you leave or mount it up top, you can get a general idea of major print issues. However, it won't detect extruding issues, so I may mount this to the gantry later. My print started failing due to suspected heat creep from the new enclosure. The chamber now gets to over 40 degrees. After 30 minutes, the nozzle would clog and just continue printing in mid-air. I solved the issue by rerunning all the calibration prints, which I discussed in a previous video. You can find that up here. This includes rerunning input shaping and pressure advance. In this case, the setting that fixed my problem was increasing the filament flow. As a sanity check, I reprinted the failed parts from earlier with success. As I finished my roll of pet G, I decided to test the pause function. The tool head moves to the corner while keeping the motors on and maintaining the hot end and bed temperatures. Remove the remaining filament and insert the new spool. While paused, you can also manually extrude, which is useful to ensure the gears actually caught the new filament. Click resume and you're good to go. Unless you wipe the nozzle, any blobs will make the transition more obvious. Other than that, it's not too noticeable unless you look closely. Coming from a really old printer, I think it's awesome we even have this option. I know there are more fancy filament runout solutions, but that's low priority for me since I'm usually around while printing. I set up ABS using the same calibration prints. Only difference is I'm running the Nevermore filter while printing. I literally rerun everything, including Max's cell and pressure advanced tests. Believe it or not, there are differences between the ABS and PETG calibrations. It seems like a waste of time and filament, but it really pays off. Sort of. Using the Super Slicer generic ABS profile, my Benchy failed at the top overhang and bridge section. From what I notice, this profile does not have cooling fans enabled. If you choose the built-in KVP ABS profile, the cooling fan is enabled. So I tried that next. By default, it uses a higher bed and lower nozzle temperature. The only changes I had to actually make for this profile was bed temp, extruder temp, retraction, and pressure advance. My bed temp is 105 and extruder 235. I found this help with the lifting that is common with ABS. At this point, I prioritized printing the spare parts that will leave my printer stuck if broken. I also reprint the custom CAN bus parts for color matching. Even with the Nevermore carbon filter, some ABS fumes will leak out. The printer is not perfectly sealed. Common air gaps are around the doors and holes in the bed panel where the wiring fishes through. A popular window fan is the Bionair, which is $70 on Amazon. While waiting for it to ship, I stumbled across this at Walmart for $15, likely returned from someone who couldn't get it to fit. Both fans do the same thing, but the Bionair is built more solid for those who care. I just need a simple fan to exhaust ABS fumes without all the extra electronics that can break. I also found the comfort zone easier to remove and it is 10 decibels quieter at the lowest speed. Regular price is $30, so you can't go wrong with either. Both fans are equally thick and won't fit some windows with the screen on. Fortunately, I did not have that issue. Now with the printer set up for ABS, I finished printing all the skirt and accent pieces. My Voron now looks like a Voron. If you found something useful in this video today, please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.